When I was 19 years old, I lived with my Tito Berto in San Pablo, a rural town in Batanes, located in the Luzon region. My parents were on a business trip and had decided that I should spend time with my Tito Berto over the summer. Tito Berto owned the largest mango farm in San Pablo. There were large trees that bore sweet yellow mangoes, sour green mangoes, and even exotic apple red mangoes. I would often help him and his farmers in gathering these mouth-watering fruits in large baskets every afternoon before having a satisfying snack consisting of freshly made mango juice and banana bread. The farm was located near a forest, and every now and then, I would usually go to the forest and take a relaxing walk. There was something about the forest that made it almost uncanny. It was either the fact that the trees were so dense that once you walk inside, you would think it was already nighttime, or because there were large shrubs and vines that grew around the path. Regardless, I liked walking in the forest. One day, after harvesting mangoes, I decided to take a break and walk into the forest. I put on my good walking shoes and headed towards the entrance of the forest. The air was clean and cold as I passed different plants and trees. I was walking even further when I suddenly heard a baby's cry. What was a baby doing in the forest? I thought as I followed the sound. The crying grew louder and louder until I reached a large mahogany tree whose roots were so huge that you could even sit on them. I looked for the place where the sound was coming from and then I saw a small opening by the roots and inside I saw a bundle. I got closer and reached in and touched it. I was startled when I heard a baby cry. I picked it up and undid the bundle and saw a small crying baby boy. My God, I exclaimed. Why is there a baby here? I tried to rock the baby to calm him down while looking around the forest. How did a baby end up here? Who would even think of leaving a baby out here where it's cold, damp, and practically dangerous? While I was comforting the baby, I took a look at the baby's features. He was quite heavy for a little guy, and he had milky white skin and soft black tufts of hair. I soon noticed that his cry was starting to grow deeper. It didn't sound like a little baby anymore. In fact, it sounded like an old man's laughter. I looked at the baby and blinked. The baby's closed eyes had opened to reveal sharp, black, angular eyes, and his soft, milk-white skin had grown wrinkled and brown like an oversized walnut. He had grown a long white beard, and his black tufts of hair had become gray and stringy. His one leg had also grown longer than the other. I gasped at the sight. The baby had become a small old man who started to laugh maniacally. I couldn't believe it. How could this cute baby suddenly turn into a creepy little man? The old man opened his mouth and showed he had large, sharp teeth. He suddenly lunged forward and sunk his teeth into my arm. I let out a cry of pain as I let go of him and stumbled back on the forest ground. Grunting in pain, I looked at the bite mark and to my horror, there were black edges around the wound and a thick yellow substance leaking out of it. I heard the old man laugh and saw that he was now standing on his legs and he was pointing at me as he started to run towards me. I scrambled up and gripping the wounded arm, ran as fast as I could, all the while hearing the strange man's laugh echo all over the forest. I ran and ran until I reached the exit of the forest and ran across the field, all the way back to Tito Berto's farm. Upon seeing my wounded arm, Tito Berto asked me what happened, and I told him about the little baby who turned into a little terrifying man. I could see Tito Berto's eyes widen with fear as he walked to the garden and plucked a handful of mango and guava leaves. He then chewed them up in his mouth before putting them on the wound. Don't remove these leaves until I say so, he said. You were very lucky. Why? I asked. This wound. This wound was caused by a chianak, he exclaimed. In folklore, a chianak was a dwarf that liked to pretend it was a baby. It usually stayed at the foot of a large tree and lures unsuspecting people with its cry. 
Once someone finds the Chianak and picks it up, it transforms back into its grotesque form and either bites or enslaves the person. My Tito Berto added that if a Chianak was found in a forest, the person could easily get lost forever. And if a Chianak bit the person, the person could get sick or worse. Ever since then, whenever I would visit Tito Berto, I try my best to avoid the forest as much as possible. I know it sounds silly, but every so often, when I'm near the entrance to the forest or any place with large trees, I hear a baby's cry followed by a low and menacing <laughs> laughter.